What's up guys, it's Kevin from Mathers on the Map and over there is Taylor. Today's video covers all things insulation and this is well overdue. <laughs> guys this video is not like our other ones this spans across three to four weeks and covers all of the insulation work that we did in the band we use rock wall insulation for all the cavities and the tough places to get into we use foam board for the window frames as well as reflectix and reflectix tape um, to create a vapor barrier to get the best insulation possible for, for the floor we use Reflectix. We were going to do foam board, but since I'm 6'1", I have very limited space and I want to be able to stand straight up. So I am not hunched over the whole time we're living in the van. Uh, this video is a little bit choppy because it's, like I said, spanned over several weeks. So um, I didn't really think through of starting and ending the clip. So I hope you bear with that. And if you have any questions on our insulation techniques, then drop a comment below. Thanks so much and hope you enjoy. All right, so for sound deadening, you need your soundproof, glass cleaner, paper towels, box cutter, and a roller to make sure everything sticks well. First thing I'm gonna do is just spray where I'm gonna apply the adhesive and just clean it off with the glass cleaner. And one of the reasons why we're doing this is because if you, I'll try and show you the different types of sounds. So without the sound deadening on this, Kind of vibrates through the vehicle so I'll stick a piece here so this is what it sounds like now and then we'll do one right after so this is what it sounds like now so for the rattle trap, they recommend, well it's not in the instructions, but if you heat it up, it's a lot easier to move and stick to the van. So I'm just leaving it in the sun right now, and they kind of warm up, and then I'm, as I make my cut, then I go apply it, but leave the, the bulk of it in the sun. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we finished the soundproofing in the van. We added the rattle trap to where Mercedes or the previous owner um, didn't put uh, soundproofing strips. So we added it to the ceiling, to the windows, as well as the uh, wheel wells, or whatever you call it. Um, so next step. So in terms of Reflectix, we have two 48 by 25s and one 24 by 50. And then we have the wool insulation, which is an R value of 23. And then we have two one inch foam boards with an R value of six. So we're gonna start with the 24 and apply it up here and tape it with the Reflectix tape that we have as well. All right, so I cut the foam board. I did uh, 48 inches across at the top, 48 and a half inches on the bottom, and then 27 inches from here to here. And then I had to cut the corners as well to get it to fit inside the window. So I'm gonna make a couple more cuts to, for the other windows, or the other window frames. All right, what's up guys? It's the next day, I didn't complete everything last night, um, but we did get the uh, what do you call it? The Reflectix on all the parts of the window frames. They're there. It's behind this foam board, it's behind this foam board here, and it's right there. What I'm going to do is take great stuff and fill it into the gaps here, and hopefully 
with some force so that sticks and is not loose because we don't want this rattling when we are driving. That's a big, uh, it's a definite thing we don't want to happen. So we're going to do that and we'll see how it goes. Okay, we just applied the great stuff around this out of the spray can. It comes out pretty fast. And it expands, so you don't really need that much. And just to recap, we have Reflectix, and then we have the foam board, and then great stuff around it to seal it and hold it in place. And we're doing below the panel windows, both sides, and every window frame. And I think Taylor's gonna put the great stuff on right here. While we wait for this part to dry on all of these windows, we are going to start installing the wool insulation that we bought um, for these crevices. Uh, we're going to stuff it in all these little areas, give more insulation to the van. Um, I am going to wear gloves just because any type of insulation you should wear gloves. It's got that fiberglass stuff in it. Um, even though we are using them. Here goes nothing. Woo! It's official, folks. Alright, so while we wait for this to dry, which is just about almost all dry, we are filling all the crevices up in here. Um, up in these parts, I could use a little more up here. If you look here in the around the wheel well, I can completely stick my hand all the way through and push all the way down to around this area, which is pretty gnarly. Uh, so there's a lot of holes and a lot of gaps. So you really need to do your due diligence and fill as much as you can. So here's what some of the wool insulation looks like. So we are literally trying to get it in every single hole. And even the door frame as well. So we're really trying to get it everywhere. It's coming together. So we're going to do the ceiling insulation last because we want to install roof rails and we're going to be installing solar panels so we'll be cutting through the roof so if we did all the insulation we'd be cutting all through that and probably making a mess so it's just easier to do that later. Alright so we used one whole, I don't know what you would call it, bag of wool insulation and we don't have enough to fill all the gaps of the lower section on the driver's side. We finished the rest minus the ceiling. Um, and we just finished putting all of the great stuff around the foam board. So next we're gonna rip up the floor. And when, when I say rip up the floor, I mean gently take out the T40 Torx uh, screws. And then we're gonna lift it up and we're gonna see how much of a gap is between the frame of the van and the floor to see if we could put in a uh, half inch foam board to provide some insulation. Some people I saw on YouTube put Reflectix and everyone has a different opinion of Reflectix. Some people raise the floor up an entire inch and put an inch uh, thickness of foam board in. We're not going to do that because I'm already 6'1 and I have very limited space to stand straight up in the van. So with that, taking that into consideration, we're going to take a uh, a little less of an R value on the floor and we're going to do a thinner, hopefully do a thinner uh, foam board on the floor. So let's see how it goes. A, uh, a little less of an R value on the floor. So I got the floor up. This was not easy as a one person job, especially when there's glue and uh, Velcro stuck to the floor. Maybe I will just put the reflectix, reflectix down instead of going the foam board actually. 
because there will be an air gap here. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that instead. We're going with reflectix. Huh. Because there will be an air gap. All right, so we got the, uh, I think it's 40 by 25 or something, or 10 by 40. Um, reflectix and we're going to lay this down and we're going to tuck it underneath the floorboard or whatever you call this thing that goes right there and we're going to use the reflectix tape to seal it off and we'll do the entire floor so ignore the mess right now but I made a mistake that I don't really feel like correcting so if you look at this side you want to make sure when you're laying the reflectors down that you find your holes. Be proactive about it so you'll know exactly where to put the screws in when you put that back the floorboard. On this side, I put the spacer or whatever you want to call it on top, which wasn't smart because it's pushing the reflectix down. The whole goal of the reflectix is to have air between reflectix and the frame of the floor. So that is not ideal. So I went ahead and lifted up the tape here and, and stuck it underneath. Uh, I'm not going to do that one, but I learned from my mistake for all the other screws and the, the two back ones that are like that. So I uh, just wanted to call that out and make sure you learn from my mistakes and put it on the bottom of the Reflectix because this, these gaps, these air gaps are good. You want that. All right, we got the Reflectix down on the floor. So far, so good. Now it's going to be the one job or the one person lifting that up and putting it down and crossing my fingers that I'll be able to line it up because I'm going to have to take these screws out and then pray to God that I can get them back in, in the right spot without the rivets or the washers below shifting at all. So wish me luck. It's going to be a tough one. Is that I'll be able to line it up because I'm going to have to take these screws out and then pray to God that I can get them back in the right. All right, so I realized after I put the floor in that there's this gap and I didn't tape this down. So I actually took the trim piece off here and then I'm going to tape this down so it's a seal um, just because I don't want water getting underneath here. And then I will put the trim back on after I put this foil tape down and then uh, we should be good to go for the floor. Not bad. Alright, so I finally got the floorboard in. It was not easy doing it by myself. I'm sweating. It's hot. Sticky. There was glue on the bottom of the floorboard, so I definitely recommend two people. Um, it should make life easier. The toughest part was getting these two pieces back together via this metal slip. But as you can see, now I just gotta screw all the pieces back down with the, with the uh, T40 Torx. And insulation on the floor is done. I will finish up the wheel wells later on. I might take a run to Lowe's to get more wool insulation for the bottom and then some more Reflectix to go as a vapor barrier in front of it. I don't think I need a vapor barrier for wool, but I'd rather just be safe than sorry. And then eventually we gotta do insulation over the, f the headboard as well. Uh, but it's coming along. This definitely took longer than expected though. So this was about two full days of work. Could probably move a little faster, but uh, as well. Uh, but it's coming along. This definitely took longer than expected though. So this was about two full days of work. Could probably move a little bit. Uh, as well. Uh, but it's coming along. This definitely took longer. This was about two full days of work. Could probably move a little faster, but uh. many months later. All right, guys. So doing some insulation work. I'm gonna take the headliner down. We originally just snuck insulation down below and into the cavities here, but I'm actually gonna take this down, put Reflectix over the headboard 
and then put the wool above the reflectix and I might create a vapor barrier as well um, we'll see I'm gonna just take all these screws out here over there these ones as well um, to get this down and then we'll see what is behind it all right so we got the headboard down and now there's a lot of space up here I'm going to stick reflectix in that crevice I'm not sure if you can see it I can get out of the shadow there and then I'm going to stuff the insulation behind or between the reflectix and right there all right so here are some of the clips that go into the top of the frame um, but this is what I was planning to do all along so I have reflectix up now and then I have the wool insulation above it it's not perfect and it certainly will not be um, you basically need to have one big strip of wool which I could do I wanted to go out and get some more but I think this should be enough I'm going to lift this up get some reflectix tape and tape it down and then I'm going to just fill the other pockets with wool and then we'll seal it off with reflectix tape and that should uh, have a good enough vapor barrier to suit our needs and you know this isn't as bad as like uh, denim insulation or um, what's the other one uh, fiberglass insulation from a moisture perspective so uh, I think we'll be okay all right super pleased how this came out we have the reflectix up and tape down and then I also have just um, some wool insulation on both sides that isn't going to be vapor tight which is okay and then I'm going to continue to stuff it once I get the headboard back up on both sides but overall pretty good I might put one strip of uh, reflectix tape right there just to get that more of the vapor barrier all right so I just got the insulation done on the door and there's a couple holes uh, in the frame where you put your panel there or whatever it's called so I just got a screwdriver and made sure I push through all of the holes so I don't lose them all right the insulation with Reflectix is done. We still have to do the back doors, I guess, so not 100% done. But it looks pretty good. We have the side door done as well. We put Reflectix uh, behind the headliner. Here we just have regular foam. Um, we're not going to seal that off, or we might, but. Overall, pretty good. All right, so, sorry I didn't get this part on camera, but I measured the foam board for this piece of the ceiling, and I'm going to use Gorilla Spray Adhesive Heavy Duty, and I'll spray the foam board in the top, and what I'm gonna do is push it against the ceiling, and it's going to be pretty tight. I made it sure that it was a nice snug fit. So I think the pressure alone would hold it. But put this on just in case. And just going to pry it up there. Uh, and then also around the wire. And I marked it with the masking tape. This is the first puck light that we're going to have here. And then I'm going to do the same for this piece here. This stuff will get in your eyes. So make sure you wear glasses if you're spraying the ceiling. It goes on completely clear. And you just let it sit for a minute. And then you stick it on. So I want to run the wire real quick for the puck light. We should be good to go. Okay, so. This is what the insulation will look like when it's completed with the Reflectix uh, below the um, foam board there. So here we have foam board and then once we have the foam board stuck there then we're just using the Reflectix and the Reflectix tape to seal everything off. And I might put one strip of Reflectix tape over the holes here and then that'll be it for insulation.
have any questions about insulating your van, I know there's a lot of different opinions out there and plenty of different ways that you can do it. If you have questions on how we did it, drop a comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it's spanned across a lot of a lot of days and probably a couple weeks because you know we did some jobs in between as we were doing the uh, insulation. So that's probably why you see a lot of wires hanging around and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Van Veld episodes, then please subscribe to our channel. And we will see you next time.